Hello everybody, hope you're doing so well. Today, I'm very excited because we're talking about my most anticipated releases of 2023. I think 2023 is looking like one of the best years for fiction releases in forever. I cannot wait for these books. Even the promise of reading these is enough to keep me going for now. So I suggest that you sit down, sit yourself down and let me talk to you about the books that I am gonna possibly pass out when I have them in my hands. First, Penance by Eliza Clark. I read her book Boy Parts in 2021 and it rapidly became one of my favourite books of all time. That book I cannot even explain. It's one of the most fascinating, funny and shocking and unhinged books I've ever read in my life. And Eliza Clark became an autobi author. Although even saying that, the premise of this book alone is enough to make me so excited. It sounds so good. This is a novel basically interrogating the world of true crime and the nature of true crime. And apparently there are even some accounts of murderers in there. Uh, I feel like Eliza Clark is gonna spin the world and the culture of true crime on its head. And I'm just very excited for her to do that. Cannot wait for this. I think this is gonna be incredible. My expectations are very high. My hopes are high. I don't think she's gonna disappoint me because she's excellent. Next, we have Gwen and I are not in love by Lex Croucher. Guys, are we ready for this book? Because I don't think that I am. This is a YA book. It's set in medieval times. Oh my gosh, I really hope that's correct. This follows Gwen, who is the Princess of England, who is betrothed and has been betrothed from birth to Arthur or Art. And they hate each other, fucking hate each other. This is until Gwen catches Arthur kissing a boy and Arthur finds Gwen's diary where she has written a couple of entries about a woman called Bridget, who is a knight. Thank you. They do decide to stay together and fake a relationship to assure protection. And this sounds incredible. All the early reviews say it's incredible. There is a lot of buzz for this. Lex wrote Reputation, which is a novel that I have previously devoured and absolutely loved. I love their work. I love their writing. And this book is going to be life changing, I think. Seriously, add it to your lists. Thank you. Next we have Chlorine by Jade Song. This also has a cover. It's also stunning. I believe this follows a young competitive swimmer who is under a lot of pressure from their family, but they then decide to take things into their own hands and become a mermaid. No matter how much blood is spilt. Great. All right. Apparently this is a dark, unsettling coming of age tale. Uh, it sounds quite surreal. It's exactly the kind of stuff that I love. I can't wait for it. I think it's gonna be great. I have high hopes for this one. Next we have, oh, you're shaking. I'm so sorry. Next we have Rosewater by Liv Little. And may I say the vibes are immaculate. It's so beautiful. If the cover is anything to go off, this book is gonna be stunning. This follows a young black woman living in London. She's 28. And she's generally just a bit tired of life uh, and still finding herself. I think that she is also an artist. I believe it's a coming of age tale that also includes a romance that stems from a long term friendship. Everything about this just sounds great. I cannot wait for it. I don't believe we have to wait very long for it. I hope I'm right there. And early reviews say that it's tender and poignant and beautiful. And thank you. I can't wait. Next we have a memoir. It is Page Boy by Elliot Page. Uh, this is a very intimate coming of age memoir from his point of view. Obviously Elliot Page shot to fame after the success of Juno, which I remember watching and thinking was incredible. And obviously his life changed a lot. So in this book he writes about his experiences uh, navigating the world of Hollywood and his difficult past. It also heavily discusses love and sex and trauma and celebrating stepping into yourself with strength and joy and this honestly just sounds incredible. I honestly think this book is going to be a really really important one and I really implore everybody to put it on their pre-orders list because I think it's going to be amazing. Also apparently Elliot Page is a really Great writer. How much talent can one person possibly have? Next we have another book from an author I love and it's Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Obviously Open Water by this author which came out in 2020 I think was one of my favourite books of 2022. Absolutely incredible writing, genuinely life-changing stuff. 
please read it. Open Water discussed many topics, but it mainly focused on a romantic relationship. And in Small Worlds, we're focusing on a father son relationship, which is the kind of dynamic that I feel like I don't really read about very often. So I'm very excited for this. I have no doubt that this author is going to write another masterpiece. <laughs> Honestly, it's gonna be a treat, I just know it. Next is Brutes by Diz Tate. Uh, there's a cover for this and I absolutely love it. This is a novel set in Florida. It follows a small friendship group of girls who are about 13 years old, I believe. And they are all kind of obsessed with the local preacher's daughter called Sammy uh, until Sammy goes missing. And we then learn that there is a dark secret that this town is keeping uh, that this small group of girls learn about uh, and see things that are life-changingly disturbing. So, I mean, sign me up. Apparently this encapsulates the manic joy and sometimes violence of young friendship and young women. Kind of excited about it. I think it's gonna be a good time. Next up is a book I actually don't know that much about, but it is called 14 Days. It's written by a whole load of authors, including Celeste Ng and Margaret Atwood. All I know about this is that it begins at the beginning of COVID during isolation times, I believe. That might be enough to put people off. Fair enough. But each author writes from the perspective of one of the people living in a building in New York City and kind of what's going on in their lives, how COVID affects that. I am really intrigued by this. I don't mind reading stuff about COVID, but I understand if this one isn't for you. But I think this sounds very intriguing um, and I would love to read from other people's perspectives during that time. Sounds great, can't wait. Next up we have Likiri Boto by Ayodeli Olafuentade. This sounds incredible. This is a twisty thriller following a family in Lagos and apparently it's a queer feminist revenge tale involving betrayal and witchcraft. Can't wait for this. I don't read as many thrillers as I used to, but when I hear a synopsis like that, I'm just like, yeah, okay. One of the ones I'm most excited about is coming really soon. And it's Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. Oh my gosh. I'm really excited about this, but I'm also really scared. I don't know what she's gonna do here. This is the third book in the Last Hours series, uh, which is one of my favorites. Ever. Her historical series are like laced with something. I don't know what it is, but they are so good. And I love these characters so much. And I'm really scared. I'm very excited about it. I have many feelings. Um, but the day this comes out, I am going to sit down and try and read as much as I can because I'm scared of spoilers. I feel like we've been waiting for this for a million years. Or is that just me? Next, we have Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan. I was blown away by Megan Nolan's book, Acts of Desperation. I think it's an incredible novel. I mentally added her to my auto buy author list forever because she's amazing. I believe this follows an Irish family who deal with the fallout from the media after I think a boy is found dead on their local estate. I think it's going to be very complex and it's going to be dealing with a lot of things. If Megan Nolan is to be trusted, and she is, this is going to be excellent. Next of course is Yellow Face by RF Kuang. This follows June and Athena who are both writers. Athena is incredibly successful and June is not. That is until June witnesses Athena's death and she steals her finished manuscript that is going to be a masterpiece and passes it off as her own. So her publisher rebrand her and rename her as Juniper Song, I believe. And this book really highlights and encapsulates uh, the erasure of Asian American authors. Obviously this book deals with themes like diversity and racism and cultural appropriation. Apparently it's razor sharp and brutally honest and I just can't wait for it. And I think that RF Kuang is gonna absolutely write a masterpiece here. So lastly we have In Limbo by Deb J.J. Lee. This is a graphic memoir I do believe. All I know about this is that we follow the author who is a Korean American woman uh, through her younger years and everything that she experienced and the artwork? I saw it on Twitter and I was like, what the hell? It is some of the most gorgeous stuff I've ever seen. I cannot wait for this. It looks absolutely stunning. If you're a fan of graphic memoirs or just graphic novels with a really interesting and exciting art style, I highly recommend that you add this to your list. I think it's gonna be so beautiful and I'm gonna wanna put it on my wall. That is my list of anticipated releases. I can't wait for every single one of them, as you can tell. I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. I just have a very good feeling about this year. I think it's gonna be genuinely excellent. Please let me know the number one book that you can't wait to read this year. I would love to know. Uh, and that's it from me. Thank you so much for being here. 
I appreciate you watching and uh, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.